Hello, all of my friends. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you watch this intro and really make you want to go on and film uh, and uh, paint along with me. Okay, this is really, really fun. Um, I think that's the... I have never painted a, a human eyes or, you know, this is Mr. Gnome. He's not Santa. My sister said he's Santa, but he's not. And that's why I use Royal Blue from Holbein to do this, so that we're not mistaken. I, uh, okay, I, uh, I, you know, I talk about this whole story about my imagination. If you go almost all the way to the end, then you can hear the whole story. And so, uh, of why this come to pass and why I do this kind of thing. At Christmas time, I like to do illustration. Uh, a lot of time, but I am doing a Ponsettis before Christmas is over, so that you guys have that. You know, I know you guys like flowers, but I, uh, I have a lot of imagination when I was young, and Christmas time is when they go wild. And so, um, as I grow in my skill, learning and growing, I was able to express myself a little bit more. Um, and so, I like to do... Um, Ah, this kind of imagination because, you know, it's a child growing up me, you know, who wanted to be able to run into a scene like this, but probably not able to see a gnome in the forest. I have never been able to do that, but I'm not dead yet. Maybe someday I will. <laughs> that, you know, just joking aside. Okay, and so um, this is going to be really fun. I like his candy cane uh, hat and, uh, and saw Mr. Uh, Mr. Um, Bird over here. Uh, 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 okay, I'm just like, you know, just uh, all this, you know, talking and laughing. Um, anyway, um, and so you will, because I have seen one of those in the winter, uh, Robin, and uh, uh, sitting outside my, my house, and that was so nice. We were coming back from church and saw a little Robin. He was really cold, so he was all fluffed up. And so this is... Um, going to be wonderful and uh, I also wanted to remind you guys that last year I've done this one and this is not one painting that you want to overlook because there's a lot of skill and learning in here and you can use that again right for this year and uh, for the tree and um, this one there's snow and I also after I stopped the video with you guys I put um, I use some and uh, let me zoom in a little bit I use some uh, acrylic and drop some snow on it. It's you know, it's just using the brush and just uh, brush and the you know and the paint. Uh, I'll just show you brush and the paint and just do this, okay? You know, lots of uh, acrylic white and then just drop it. Maybe you can dilute that a little bit and then I drop some over here and over here, but not on the norm. But you can do you know if you want the whole scene to be snowy, you can do that, okay? And so I think you guys will really have fun. Uh, painting along this with me. The only thing that I have changed after I said goodbye is I put, I told you that I put in more of the ground from here to over here and and just the snow and that's it. And so this will be really, really fun. Take your time, you know, uh, stop and, uh, you know, go back a little bit and to see, to see if you miss something. And I like the glow too. Anyway, this is really fun. And all the information will be at sunsetpeony.com. Uh, with the color that I use and um, and as I go along painting of course you see the product that I use right um, I'm always with the same brushes and uh, so it's a little bit colorful I had a lot of fun it uh, keep uh, today is the day before Thanksgiving after I film this I'm gonna have to go make pie and jello uh, and so uh, that will be really fun so I say happy Thanksgiving to all of you and uh, it just uh, you know, it's bringing up the magical of the season uh, to me. And I hope that by doing this, you will, you know, have fun and just have the quiet moment when you're painting, you would feel, you know, um, all those magic of Christmas and the, you know, cold weather and the holiday season. Okay. And so I'm going to stop talking. I, th I think that's it. And uh, let you guys uh, get on with the painting. Okay. Okay, everyone. Let's get started, okay? Um, the first thing we're gonna do the sleeve and the um, and the uh, gnome suits, okay? Royal blue. Um, that's the Holbein royal blue. That's why I'm going to pick up some with this number two brush, okay? It's a very very uh, 
very very small from Jackson. Okay, now so on the shoulder there is a uh, a muscle right there. Okay, so it's kind of round roundish, and if you would just uh, keep your mind that way, and as you paint, you know a little more pigment. Okay, as you paint, you will just remember that. Okay, so why am I going down here? Because I'm going to use all my pigment down here um, as much as I can. You know, because it is a little bit deeper. I always worry as soon as I start painting. Okay, do I have enough light? Did I turn on all the light that's around me? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna, you know, so you can see that right as we're progressing, the pigment uh, already kind of. Uh, so this is a circle, right, because of the shoulder, okay? And so now I'm going to uh, come in, go in and clean the brush, okay? So it's a clean brush. It's kind of wet, you know, but not not a lot of water on it. And I'm going to start pulling the color out of the, of the you know, of the side of the pigment, okay? And then, uh, you know, um, you know I, I walk you guys through this, you know, so it's going, so you can see that that part is lighter, right? And you know, uh, to your eye as an artist, this is the, this is the, you know, the way. Maybe I want a little bit more, just a drop of pigment over here, okay? And then I'm going to smooth out this area right here, this area right here, and uh, so that it is just kind of like a ball, like a highlight of a ball, okay? So you can show that his shoulder is right there. And so it's kind of nice and pretty and I feel like I need a little bit more pigment over here to make it be a little darker, you know, darker over here and then let it progress, okay, to that area, to the shoulder. Uh, the, what do you call it? Is that the, no, that's not the peg, but this, you know, what is the name of that muscle on your shoulder? Anyway, I think you guys know what I'm talking about, okay? Now, uh, so that is the part, and now we're going to work on this area, and still using the royal blue. I just really like the royal blue color from Holbein, because it just, uh, it's a deeper, a deeper kind of color, and uh, let me pull you a little bit closer, okay? Now, so it's under his beard, right? Under his, uh, the gnome, and we're going to call him Mr. Gnome, and let's uh, just try to remember that, because, you know, um, you know, I, I have told you that most of the time when I'm painting, I use my, I believe that I'm using my subconscious, you know, most of the time. So sometimes with so many things going on, I might call him Sander, but he it really is not Sander. My sister saw the practice that I did yesterday and she said, oh, that's a very cute Sander. <laughs> well, and I say I'm, you know, trying to make him a... Um, a gnome, you know, so I particularly do, do not want to do red, right? And you know how my feeling is with red. I love red, but now I just clean the brush and I'm going to pull this color out. Because underneath the beard, he is a little bit, uh, and also underneath the shoulder over here, right? So it's probably just not a lot of things you have to worry about. Just go ahead and pull the color out so it's not so intense. It had a little bit of... Um, Okay, so that is kind of dark, right? But if I want to make it a little bit darker, I can either go into the indigo, but today I'm going to try to do something different. I'm going to use my ink. So I put a drop of the Chinese ink that I show you. I don't remember what, last time what do we use the ink for, um, for one of the last painting, okay? I'm going to put some dark here because today is a good time to play with, when we have the dark, we want it a lot darker, okay? And so I... I have, um, you know, done that, uh, done that a uh, long time ago. What is that I'm talking about is use, um, using Chinese ink with my watercolor. And somehow, you know, sometimes you change and, you know, you forgot. Okay, now I'm going to do this, this uh, leg over here, okay? Mm. Or should we do the whole thing? Uh, let's do the whole thing, okay? Let's do the whole thing. Okay, the whole... Um, Okay, so I'm changing it to the uh, to this brush. It's just a little bit bigger than the other one. The reason why is, you know, sometimes, you know, you got to match the brush not only to your paper but to the area that you're painting. And if you're painting a little bit of a big area, then you can use a little bit of bigger brush. Okay. Now, so I'm gonna start over here. That's where the belt should have a little bit of a shadow on him. 
okay and obviously I do not have uh, enough pigment on my brush so I go in and get some more okay now the 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 consistency is a little bit, bit more liquidy but that's okay you know and so if I say oh wow it's not very intense then I go to get a little more pigment and you know just kind of try to make it more intense okay at this point we don't have to really worry if if things are not quite intense enough for your liking you can always you know go in later and change it and then I'm um, you know uh, so I don't know maybe you can guess what I'm doing right I am uh, leaving this area kind of whitish okay and then I'm gonna clean my brush and now I'm pulling out the color again okay so that I'm respecting the the light and the darkness okay of the you know the light and the shadow to portray the form right and so you know you know that I always do that I'm very very respectful of uh, of what we have to do to make sure that the form you know this look like a ball and his body kind of look like a tube okay but not underneath his beard because his beard will have cast a shadow there okay now as I'm okay so uh, as this is still a little bit wet I'm I'm going to use a clean brush and kind of what I call lift this a little bit okay so that his uh, <laughs> his uh, thigh the top of the thigh kind of show a little bit and it's the same with this side because we want uh, Mr. Nom to have a lot of food to eat and so he's nice and plump in the forest okay this is a forest gnome at least I wanted I wanted him to be a forest gnome I'm just dropping in the color to make this a little bit darker okay because if this is a little bit darker it will make his the area that I just lift up the thigh area a little bit um, what do you call that a little bit uh, fuller okay and then I'm dipping in a little bit of my Chinese ink again, okay? And I'm just gonna put some over here because this is really the shadowy part, right? And so now you can see the intensity just change, okay? Now, so this is kinda, kinda wet. So we're gonna leave this part alone and not do the belt yet, okay? Nor his pants. Okay, let's go on to his face, okay? And so what I usually do is, I'm, you know, when I have this brush, even though his face is just a little bit of area, sometimes I don't change it before, you know, maybe you can change it into a smaller brush, okay? So I'm just uh, mentioning that. So if that's how you feel, then you can, okay? Now in my palette, there is like uh, some burnt sienna next to some red color. Okay, so burnt sienna has a little bit of brownish and then I mix that together and I'm going to do his nose, okay? And that's the flash. Now, right now it might look a little bit brown. You know, actually, you know, with, I have so much light going on right here, okay? Now, his his nice nose for Mr. Nom, you know, should also re keep in mind, right? It is kind of like a ball, okay? And so I'm going to leave that uh, opening right there and then soften the line over here so that you can see some depth, uh, depth to the ball, right? And then I say, oh, I wanted it to be a little bit darker over this side, and then I'll come do that. Now, what I was just beginning to say is, um, wow, losing my voice, I wonder why. Um, uh, okay, so it's uh, gently going around his eye, and over the face of his cheek is also like a little ball, okay? So we have to do kind of the same thing as the nose, okay? We kind of, like we're painting a ball, okay? And leave some white over there okay or you can just paint the whole area and then go in and lift the color okay it's up to you but you know this is usually what I do okay so you can see his cheek is kind of full right instead of a, just a big flat area you know because I have left the the white area then it become a nice cheek over there that you can see now he might look a little bit dark though you know right now but I can hardly see because I have you know one one two three very very bright white light and then the top light and then I open the window the window is kind of dark outside though today but um okay so I think that after we start painting around it and then uh, it will look a little more um a little more uh it will look darker actually so you know just a tip when you're painting flesh like the skin color okay it is better to make it a little bit darker Okay, and that's the ear, and it's, you know, since it's so minute over here, I'm just going to paint it and leave a little bit of highlight here and there, okay? Not really something to worry about, okay? Now, let's go on to the little birdie because everything is a little bit wet over here, okay? So we're going to 
go on to Mr. Birdie over here. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to actually use uh, a quinacolum burn orange for uh, this is um, um, this is my little robin. Okay. Now the reason why when I'm designing this, I decide to use do a little bit of a robin because. Um, when a long time ago, one time it was on Sunday and we went to church, um, just like any normal Sunday, okay? Now, so you, you're you painting, now I'm going to just go into the beak because this is a very, very small part of the painting. And so I don't want to um, do a little bit, uh, do a little too much of um, uh, of details, okay? So I will show you, okay? Now, this is a very good uh, painting for me to show you. Usually, when I'm illustrating, at Christmas time, I like to do illustration because um, I have always loved Winter Wonderland. I came from Hong Kong, okay? And uh, in Hong Kong, we don't have snow. It's a tropical climate. Imagine the first time I see snow. Now, I'm going to come up here and a little bit soften the line if you wanted to, okay? And soften the line over here. So, Mr. Uh, or um, Little Miss... Uh, Robin are not going to be so sharp the color, okay? And then I'm going to use a little bit of cadmium yellow and just drop a little bit on the edge, okay? Not a lot because you know you will see because this is really a very very small bird. And so at Christmas time, I like to just you know I am a very imaginer, you know I like use my imagination a lot. Okay, now we're going to go to the sepia and do his wings, okay? So just a suggestion that he has some wings over here, okay? not have to worry about just a little bit of a triangle shape over here then his wing is settling and if you want to you can just put a little bit just a, a stroke over here okay but that's not even necessary okay back to the sepia and i'm still using my number two okay i'm just picking up a little bit of sepia and do the crown of his head you know and just don't worry about too much detail okay just um do the you know just uh, have fun and just slap in some color and in the right area because what happened is you know when we do illustration we have a lot of um, a lot of very small area and we wanted to be able to um, you know uh, do as little detail as we uh, we can because the problem is like you know with a human eye when we look into something that's that small, we usually do not um, register so much detail, okay? So it's not necessary. And if we put too much detail, then it becomes very, very busy to our eye, okay? Now, what I'm going to do right now is, I think the robin is uh, uh, maybe a little bit little bit more sepia over here because I'm using some water and I'm losing the, 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 the shape. But, you know, for you, you look at it and what do you see? Of course, you see... Um, you see a robin, right? Uh, okay, so now what I'm going to do is use a little bit of paint gray mixed with that royal blue, okay? Just a little bit, almost insignificant amount, okay? And I'm going to come over here. Because, you know, with robin, when we paint them, they usually have some kind of blue on them. You know, we do that with artists, okay? And so that's what I'm going to do, okay? Just very, very slight amount okay and i'm going to leave it right like right there for now okay and you can see the little bird is already done and pop up okay now back to mr gnome okay now so what should we do let's do this uh fun uh red part okay uh let's do that um, i think i wanted to use a little bit of uh now i remember introducing this brush to you guys last time oh yes in the aspen okay that's the daniel smith brush that they have discontinued but I think any kind of synthetic this is a synthetic brush okay so now this is the white part of the gnome's hat and then we're gonna do red uh, candy cane stripe of course you're gonna see it over here how um, what we're gonna do so um, that's what we're gonna do okay uh, do the red candy cane and so first thing I'm going to dip in the cadmium red color mixed with a little bit of yellow of cadmium yellow medium okay and cadmium red medium okay so a lot more red than yellow but it's up to you you can uh, you can actually do it totally different color too okay so we're gonna this is just uh, what I come up with um, a long time ago and I like it I like the cadmium you know sometimes I just have paints that are close to each other because I like the combination and I think that it gives us a very, very rich color. 
And so, but as for you, you know, if you say, you know, I'm going to do something different and uh, I'm going to just uh, maybe do a blue stripe, you know, but I like candy cane color, right? So I'm going to, of course, work it into this gnome right here, okay? Now you can see that I'm coming over here and I'm leaving that highlight, okay? And that's actually quite important when you're painting things that are, you know, his, uh, the top of the, his hat is really um, a cone, right? Is a cone, it's not a stripe of rectangle. So this is how you make the shape look more alive like that, by leaving uh, open area of uh, highlight, okay? Uh, I can come in here a little bit, just a little bit of open area, okay? Now then, then, since I'm trying to do candy cane, this part is going to be white, and so I'm working on this part, the same uh, med uh, cadmium medium mixed with a little bit of yellow, just to brighten the red up. Okay, cadmium uh, red medium already have yellow in it. At least that's what I believe. You know, I don't uh, really go into studying the paint. You know, maybe someday when I have color, when I have time, I might do that. But um, so I know that I'm just knowing. How do I know that? Just by looking at it. Okay, so this is consistent with this part, right? And carry over the highlight. The highlight need to carry over. Okay, and I promise that if you would uh, when you're practicing and paying along with me you know just um you know uh, humor me and go along with me how i leaving the highlight you know because it just makes things so much more alive okay and then you can see the candy cane shape is coming along okay so we're gonna do this one and for the rest of his hat okay of his uh yeah little hat okay because always there's light coming and uh since it's my own um, invention, right, or composition or illustration, I have to, you know, I have to um, imagine to myself, not just imagining. Now, this side is already coming down, right? So it should be more like on the shadow. And then we're going to do that, okay? Oh, actually, I want a little bit more. Not so much highlight for this one down here, okay? So the highlight is still over there. And we need to be consistent, okay? So the highlight is coming through over here, okay? And then you see me in a minute how I'm going to also put in a little bit more shadow. Okay, I want this to be a little bit more intense in red. Like I say, you know, red is a little bit hard on me because I, if I'm going to use red, I want it to be quite intense, right? But uh, sometimes red doesn't want to do that. Now, what I'm going to do is, like at this point, is as good as any other point, I'm going to use the brown. Uh, burn umber color, okay? And then I'm going to put it right here on the edge while the pink, the red paint color is still a little bit red, uh, wet. The reason why I do that is this way then you can um, uh, you can use that as a shadow. Okay, we can also use blue color as a shadow but somehow through the years I kind of like the brown color the burnt umber together with the cadmium red. So I'm going to uh, give you my, you know, preference combination is not secret. I was going to say secret, but I really keep no secret from you guys. You know, I just share <laughs> all of my color combination, what is good through my years of experience. And we have fun, right? And uh, I share it with you and we do it all together. I don't... Uh, I don't like to, you know, it would be very hard for me to, you know, keep something as a secret or a technique or anything like that. And then, uh, and then uh, you guys, uh, you know, why, right? Anyway, I don't like to do things like that. <laughs> okay, a little bit of uh, burnt umber. Okay, down here. Okay, so that's my combination mix. Okay, and if you... Uh, have ping along with me, you understand that, you know, I give you com combination mix of uh, my color as I go. You know, I I just don't do those, uh, like, um, you know, just strict tutorial and say this is good with that, that is good with that, you know. You will you will get it as, as we go, right? Don't you think that's a better way, you know, of uh, doing things, you know. And then when one day when you are creating your own and you say, oh, I need a red a really nice Christmas red combination, you know, then you can say, oh, I remember Kathy had painted a gnome and let's go and see what uh, color combination she used uh, for the candy cane hats, right? And then you know where to find 
my combination okay so that's just uh, for you guys who are so nice and uh, pinged along with me and then you can uh, you know just uh, so that you will remember now that I say that to you you know I, I think that you guys uh, do understand that if you are trying to follow me um, with my painting now this part is not quite sharp and so I'm gonna go in with some red and kind of sharpen it a little bit you know just kind of tidy up the edge okay just kind of make it so it's a little bit tidy because it looks really good you know but uh, once you put it on YouTube and you uh, kind of you know <laughs> what do you call that you enlarge it and uh, it looks like the edge doesn't look too good but it you know trust me okay my my painting are good and they are not of course they're not like absolutely perfect you know because I do have to um, sometimes try to go faster than I want okay so still a little bit of highlight okay so it's kind of come through direction like that over there it's, it's kind of fun it's kind of pretty too okay not enough highlight so I'm gonna lift some up with a clean brush just lift it up okay a little bit remember one of the problem solving I think I talked to you about you know painting watercolor is really usually you know you just okay see what the water is going okay it's going this way or that way and then I'm going to okay isn't that kind of fun so the candy cane is showing it's showing its shape okay it's showing its shape right now okay just kind of bend down and then we'll use the background to help it and then now we're up to the up to the fuzzy fuzzy uh, fuzzy uh, tail part of the okay a little bit more red fuzzy tail part of the of the of his head and so we're gonna just do it this way okay just uh, you know just use your imagination right and just do something fun over here okay and so that's what I'm gonna do and I'm going to uh, also drop a little bit of the burnt umber color on it uh, to help it have a little bit of more shadow in the shadowy area yeah so I was talking to you you know since I come from Hong Kong we don't have a lot of snow no actually we don't have snow at all you know let's make it clear you know like my mind is thinking about painting and talking at the same time right so sometimes I say something kind of strange um, we don't have snow and so I uh, when I first saw snow in America I just love it um, I was in Oregon but it didn't snow a whole lot over there it snowed some but not a whole lot and so um, we're gonna let this part dry and then we'll do the shadow part of the of the white part of the candy cane hat okay now let's go on to his beer why not right and so uh, Mr. Gnome I'm going to use a uh, pink gray okay and then you can see there's two part and you can tell I'm um, the line that I'm going to give you is going to be a little bit a little bit uh, stronger than what you can see now okay so I'm going to just like what we always paint white right there's two sections of his beard and that's the upper part how's that okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just drop some uh, drop some um, paint spray over here okay and then you can see right very very slight and then I'm going to you know soften the edge because what I'm just painting is the shadow right I always talk about that we're just doing the shadow part okay so because you want it to see that it's white we can put a little bit of yellow later when we get to that part okay and so this is some shadow okay and then behind his ear the shadow is a little bit stronger okay so we will put a little bit more of the paint spray over here okay a little bit more and a little bit just soften the soft the top part okay shadow we want to make it uh, soft okay so it's kind of coming straight and then we're gonna come down here I, I do a little wiggly thing over there because uh, when we paint the background it will help you to see a little bit better okay because I just that's my um, you know I'm using my imagination right and then my composition and I just uh, you know I was just getting this uh, the drawing part ready and I say oh I want his beard to kind of wiggle up a little bit and so I did. Now I'm going to use a little the pink screen mix with a, just a little tap of the uh, royal blue. Okay, okay. And so now since um, I want it to kind of go straight down, his beard goes straight down. But if you want his beard curly, you can do curly over here. Okay. 
you know, you do have a, a, a lot of, um, you know, uh, your own imagination or what, what your own design, you know, but, um, you know, having said that, I just wanted to make sure you guys understand that if you, um, you know, I want you guys to paint along and learn this, paint along with me and learn this, right? Um, if you change the color of the suit or the, the direction of the beer, it doesn't mean that, you know, that become your, you know, your, um, that you can sell it, you know, without like kind of, what is, uh, you know, lack of a better word, like kind of ripping me off. Um, and so just uh, be careful, you know, if you, um, you know, really, oh, say that's a good idea, you know, you can completely change the composition. You do a gnome that is doing, um, you know, uh, like walking in different direction or not looking at the bird, you know, and uh, you can change, you know, put a squirrel, there, you know, just different thing, right? That's how you, you know, use your own imagination and creativity so that you won't be just copying me and... Uh, you know, I have a couple of people that uh, had asked me if people want to buy it. Well, then how about if you refer them to my shop in sunsetpeony.com where you get this drawing, okay? I have a shop over there. Just have them, you know, go over there and buy my stuff. Then you, in a way that you can help me, you know, with my creation, then I can have uh, some kind of a fun for um, creating more, you know, and not ripping me off. And I think that will be very a kind gesture, okay? So what I'm saying is like, you know, if you use this, you know, like what I draw, don't just change the color and, you know, go sell it. That wouldn't be very happy for me, actually, okay? And just so that you know, that's how I feel, okay? Now, let's get to the belt part, okay? The belt part. Now, we wanted to make sure that this is a tube, right? His whole body is a, is a round tube. So we're going to use, have, have a little bit of highlight over here, okay? And I'm going to show you how to do that. And so, you know, as a as a little girl, you come to, well, I was 15 years old, not too little, but you come to America, right? Okay, so I want my brown to be a little bit darker. And sometimes if you want your brown to be even more darker, then you can, uh, you can actually put some uh, lamb black color in it. That's how I do that, okay? So that's another tip. So is that nice that you come and, and ping along with me? Because all of my tips uh, show up as you paint with me. And you will know that there's a lot of tips, right? Now I just soften that part, okay? Soften that part, and so that it just come over here, and uh, I'm gonna put something else over there, okay? And then I'm gonna start over here, and now this part is gonna be darker, right? Because it's underneath his arm, and maybe his fat uh, little tummy kinda droop over, so you can do this part darker. And so what I'm gonna do today is, uh, I'm gonna use the burn umber color over here first, Okay, and this is still wet, right? And while it's wet, I might, uh, you know, I need a little bit more pointy of a brush over there. Okay, I might use some of my ink, my Chinese ink, because today I'm using the Chinese ink to make shadow, okay, and make some shadow over here. Okay, do you see that? I just dropped some Chinese black over there. Now you know that you can enlarge the picture now on YouTube, so if you, you know, can't see it, you can just go back and do that, okay? And so, in order to make it smoother, I'm going to go back to the burn number and put a little bit more burn number so that there's more pigment of the burn number to mix with that Chinese ink, okay? And so it make it kind of, I really think that it's pretty. Now, you know, sometimes I don't understand that there are rules you know about color and you know what you should use and people like um talk about medium you know now as for me i just do what i learn by myself okay as with the chinese we we use acrylic to do white you know we use the medium to help us you know so don't worry about mixing some medium the only thing that i can see that that is wrong with mixing medium is if you um, uh, watercolor is very luminescent. Okay, now I'm going into the into the burn umber. Okay, because I've used some uh, burn umber over here, right? So I'm very consistent. So now the uh, the lighter part of his belt, where the tummy sticks out, 
you know, it's going to have some bell number there. So I think that that's kind of pretty. You can see that how pretty his belt is, right? Because it has like, you know, it has the brown color. You know, I'm going to put some more brown pigment here to go into the belt. Okay, just drop it in there. It has brown color. It has uh, some black in there. It's just, it's just, um, you know, if you're here in real person and when you're painting it yourself, you see how awesome that is. Now, we're talking about mixed medium, right? And so, I know that like people have opinion and such, you know, and so you might just take this as my own opinion, okay? Now, the only problem I can see if you mix medium and if you're not careful, you know, what you need to do is just um, use mainly watercolor, but, um, okay, I'm just going to come down and paint it before I, you know, just paint it all the same color burn number, okay? Burn number, that's his pants. You know, I just like it to match the match his um belly. That's why I'm doing that, okay? Now, because uh his knee where it's round, you can lift the color up. Or at this position at this point I'm just going to soften, use a clean brush and soften that area so you can you know you can see that there's a round area over here, okay? So that's just the highlight, okay? Because his knee come down here a little bit, right? And as he come down, um, it become a ball again, okay? And so we're going to do that so that it looks like a ball to you. So you look like that. Oh, yeah, his knee is coming down. Okay, I'm doing the same thing. I'm going into with my uh, Chinese black ink. Ooh, now I can see, ooh, that's a lot, okay? But don't worry, okay? Use a clean brush and you can soften it, soften it. Okay, and then put a little bit of darkness over here. Now, this kind of where you put the dark and where you put the light is your own experience, okay, through the year. And a little bit of dark over here, okay? So you're using that black and come down here. And then his leg become, suddenly it become a tube, you know. It's very, ah, uh, I like it. <laughs> okay, let's go on to his, uh, uh, this leg over here, okay? Now, we're going to have a little bit of highlight. You can see that how I'm going to do that, okay? There's a shadow right here. It's casting from the, his shirt, okay, Mr. Gnome's shirt. And then it's going to come down here. You can butt it against the other leg, okay? It really doesn't matter. Okay, and then I need more burn number. And I uh, I really like, um, you know, uh, at Christmas time, I like to do some illustration, you know, when, with my watercolor. I've always done that. Even before I do YouTube, I am, you know, I just... Uh, really like uh you know use let your imagination just go right and hope that your skill will match up to your imagination and so i love winter wonderland uh, uh oregon where salem oregon is kind of close to the coast okay so you don't see a lot of um okay now so I, i'm leaving a highlight on the knee area. You can see that, right? So it make it a ball and this highlight is for the light to come in from the side, okay? And so I respect that, you know, his, uh, his, uh, okay, a little bit of black again, okay? Here to intensify the, the darkness over here, okay? Isn't that fun? And maybe there's a little bit of darkness over here, okay? But, you know, remember this highlight right here, okay? So you, you know, you really need to, um, you know, stick to those rules because those are, you know, what the tools that give us an artist to make things come more alive and, you know, more like a human or whatever we're trying to portray. Also trees, um, we do that kind of thing. And so let's do his the middle part of his belt, okay? Let's just do a little bit of... Um, you know, this part is actually quite dark, so we don't need to worry much about this part. Um, okay, so it's mainly just brown color. If I want to, I might drop a little drop of uh, black on it. A little drop of black on it to make it a little bit darker, okay? And uh, so I like, um, you know, to use my imagination at Christmas time and do illustration. But I am going to, you know, I have pensatis, and so that is also going to come up. Uh, I think I'm going to do a pink and green one because I have a red one. So I'm going to do Ponsettius or Ponsettius. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, now, so I'm thinking that if the light is from here, then there will be some lights coming here. And this part is more shadow. 
okay so his boot not very hard okay we're just going to we're just going to come here and just do this okay he has a little round shape of the boot his boots his uh, gray shape gray shape so it's paints gray okay and then I'm going to leave uh, leave a little bit more dark over here and a little bit of a highlight over here okay you know for his ankle area when you do um, some kind of human you know even though it's just um, you know a uh, humanized object I guess that's how you if, if that's how you call it then uh, we have to you know remember this like you know human does have a lot of um, you know different shape on the body and so we try to you know do the main shape okay because we're not like Michelangelo trying to um, uh, trying to you know uh, do human as very very detailed right and so I'm putting some darker part and making shadow and then I'm going to come back and do a little bit more of something in a minute okay and uh, let me stop this sometime I have to stop the film uh, if I remember but my camcorder actually does a very good job it just um, okay so there's a little bit of shadow it just if it is too full you know like I've gone for more than 35 minutes it will actually stop for me but for some reason I just like like to do that okay now so that's his uh, the rest of his boots you know this part is more shadowy so we don't worry about it we just let it be a little bit of the darker gray okay now we're coming down into this which is his toe area the toe box I guess you can call it lack of a better description I really am not very good with description okay and we are going to uh, need to leave a little round ball here you know because we're foreshortening okay and so this round ball over here is where his uh, the tip of the of his shoes okay like that side right there but you know transfer over the other side okay then you can see that okay and then that will be fun and I need to put a little bit shadow over there if I remember I'll come back because um, that will be something I will do in a minute okay and then I'm going to use just any uh, small brush and go back to the paint spray okay get a little more pigment and then come over here okay and do a little bit of the wrinkle of the boots okay where he is uh, bending right his leg is bending over there so you want the little bit of wrinkle showing right there okay now I think this side is also ready so I'm going to because of this foreshortening so there's a, a shadow behind the tip okay isn't that fun so that part is done okay we're not going to do too much detail okay so Mr. Norm is done now and uh, so what was something that I say oh yes let's do his belt okay uh, going back to number two okay and so we use uh, some yellow a uh, bright yellow let's do cadmium yellow medium the belt buckle okay uh, not really a lot of um, thing we need to do just kind of paint it uh, this might be a little shadowy area we're not going to worry about that okay and uh, so this is belt buckle okay so we use the we use the yellow uh, to use it as to portray as gold of course I have a lot of gold color but you know if you if I'm going to scan this you know because my sister wanted to buy a lot of this you know for giving it to her friends and such you know and so I need to scan this you know so I can um, make it into a, I'm just using some burn umber right here to make it a little bit more shadowy okay now um, and so I use yellow because yellow when you scan it it come out better and so sometime I might just afterwards I will put some gold color there but you guys don't have to worry about that okay that's just my worry and then let's go back into the paint gray okay now what are we going to do I'm going to use this little brush uh, number two and I'm going to go into the paint gray and mix it again with a little bit of the royal blue okay and I'm going to do the white part now we can't forget this we can't just leave it all white okay even though it's white we need to remember the shadow okay so we use the paint gray for the shadow very very light and then soften it as it go up to the light okay I'm going to do it one two three four five five times six times and so you can just uh, watch me and uh, and follow along as I as I get away and talk about 
illustration and stuff. Okay, let's talk about the media first, okay? So if you use mixed media, sometimes when watercolor is very, um, uh, uh, you know, it's very luminous, okay? You can see through it. You can, uh, sometimes it's translucent, okay? Now, but uh, the other medium, like acrylic or whatever you use or gouache, okay? They're not, okay? So if you use gouache, okay, so now less shadow here because it's coming back towards his head and there's more light, okay? So just use a very, very faint amount of uh, pink gray, okay? So that you can, it's a very consistent, right? The whole thing is, um, has shadow, okay? And uh, so, you know, if you use, uh, you know, like uh, gouache or acrylic, you have to remember that they don't match quite well. And so, if you wanted to mix media, which I do, I know that because the Chinese does that, the Chinese discipline of painting. So I do that. Now, this is the white part, the furry white part. We also need to put shadow right here, right? And let's don't forget and remember to do that, okay? So a little bit of pink gray, and then just uh, smooth it out and soften it and leave a lot of white over there, okay? Now, um, uh, so his uh, hat area is done, okay? Now when you go next to the red, be a little bit more careful because the red always wanted to move. And I think that I've talked about that enough. <laughs> with you guys, you know, so that you know that, right? And so I think Mr. Nome is done, unless he's not. Okay, now let's go to our, let's go to our, uh, our little Robin, okay? Very, very light pink gray, okay? I want you to divide her body into half, okay? And from here on, come down here, okay? Now we are also, what, what, what is Kathy doing? I'm trying to do the, do the, um, the rule of uh, making sure that we have the shadow, okay? So half of his body, now this line can be too harsh. See, that's my problem when I <laughs> when I uh, uh, use a sedimentary color and I forgot, okay? So I need to soften this area a little bit. Wow, you guys see that uh, a little bit of a mistake is coming into your eye, okay? Now, and so I'm going to make this part over here, this half of our, I'm just, because it's kind of dryish, okay? So I'm going to just slap down the pink gray color on this side, okay? And so it will look very, very good. Okay? So now that line has uh, disappeared. I just got lucky, you know. I got a little heavy-handed and a uh, little too slow, you know. Okay, so do you see that? The bird is in the shadow over here. And then uh, and the, in the light on the other side, okay? So uh, if you want a little bit more shadow to portray his round body, you can just do a little bit more, okay? And that will look very good. It really does. And you need to trust me and be remember to do uh, shadows, okay? Because shadows in uh, in painting is very, very important, okay? So I darkened uh, his top head. Now, so pretty much this area is done. So we're going to, from now on, it's... Uh, doing the, now I uh, I probably am going to do this on my intro, okay? I have done this last year at Christmas time. It's a very, very pretty um, uh, a chickadee in the snow scene, okay? Now, I want to talk about this again. This is not to be overlooked, okay? You go back to my video, and when you have time, try to do this, okay? Even in January, February, when it's still cold, okay? Because there's a lot of technique in this one, okay? And it's, I really love that. And my, I'm gonna, you know, make card for my sisters. And, you know, she, uh, she likes to do that, you know, with me in the holiday time. She would just ask me, you know, uh, because she, all the people that uh, she gave the cards to people just love it. I mean, I, I know it's like I'm, you know, tooting my own horn maybe a little bit, but they do, uh, they do love it. And so it's the time and I'm going to be a little bit busy, but don't worry though. I'm still going to do Ponsidious and, and uh, the next one will be uh, some uh, 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 penguin, little baby penguin. Okay, so I'm going to start over here, okay? Now what I'm going to do is do the, uh, now I'm going to do the, um, you know, you see the way I hold my brush. I hold it all, all, almost all the way to my to the end. And why am I doing that? Because this is the very nice and loose watercolor area, okay? And in order to be able to do that, 
if you put your hand all the way to the front of the paintbrush, you'll be a lot tighter, okay? So to loosen yourself up, you know, you have a lot of indigo blue, okay? Ready for you? Okay, now this is the, why am I leaving those white? It's just like the, you know, the painting that I just showed you, okay? I am trying to make snow. Now I don't have any uh, lines. I will try to give you some line when I when I draw the lines. Meaning, well, what I mean is I don't have. Uh, okay, now for example, I say I want the snow to be right here. Okay, I can gently use a paper, uh, use a, a pencil, and say here's my snow. Okay, and I can do that because in a minute I'm going to do a a, a pink gray and purple mix. Okay dark background okay but here I'm just loosely and so if last year you had ping along with me with that um, with the chickadee in the snow in the pine then you will know you know how to do that right right now okay now I'm gonna dip my tip of my uh, paintbrush onto the ink okay under the Chinese ink and I'm gonna do that okay because I think that is just beautiful so I say heck heck you know now this is my mixed medium you know but you know Chinese uh, always had always used the ink with their watercolor so there's no um, inconsistent in the medium does that make sense actually it become very luminescent and beautiful and so I want you guys to trust me okay just trust me and do this okay now while this is still wet I might uh, pull a little bit of the blue you know down okay and so what am I doing I'm just doing the atmosphere while I'm painting okay I'm doing the background while I'm painting okay so you guys can do that okay while it's still wet you know you can pull a little bit and that become the background okay and so what does the background have it has some ink and some indigo color that I've been using because why do I use indigo for a pine tree because it is, um, and I'm going to stop right there, and you will know why in a minute, okay? I don't want this to go any further down the atmosphere, okay? And then with the atmosphere, we're going to drop a little bit of beautiful blue purple in here. Okay, isn't that great? And you can still see the pine tree, right? So don't pull too much. And if you did, then you can come back and you know just fix it later okay it doesn't matter okay so um, I'm going to do this okay now I'm coming down here and do the second layer of the pine okay now my brush is too wet I can I can always tell and when I can tell I will just go in and you know rinse it out and redo it and that's uh, what I was always talking about to you guys about you know get used to your brush right and you can feel it you don't even have to look at it you can feel it and say wow you know, there's just too much water, okay? This part is going to be snow, okay? And then in some part of the snow, I'm just going to do an irregular shape over here. Just a dab. Because snow doesn't cover. Snow is very unpredictable, right? And then put a little bit of black of that ink, okay? The Chinese ink and a little bit while I still have some, you know, over here to this batch of aspen, okay? No, aspen, sorry, the pine tree. Okay, you can see the pine is coming together, okay? So we need to kind of... You know, I'm going fast, but you guys, you know, if you are, you know, this is really the part of the painting that you're really going to enjoy, okay? Because it's very, you know, abstract and uh, it doesn't like really, um, you know, uh, whatever you do is probably going to be right, okay? So don't think about, oh, I'm going to do this wrong, okay? Let's like, you know, but as as long as you have the bows, right? The, the bows, which meaning the pine the pine boughs, I think, you know, is the branch. As long as you have that general shape coming down here, it will look great, right? Okay, so I'm just doing this without, you know, I'm just drawing. I don't have any, uh, now I'm dropping the black over here again, okay? So to intensify the, intensify the indigo, right? Now, if you say, oh, Kathy, you know, you need some green in there, even though it's nighttime, you can just put some green. Wow, my green look like, okay, <laughs> I, <laughs> I went to the wrong paint, okay, so I can drop some green, okay. So what I did is just, I just went over there and got some perlene green, okay, and I'm going to drop it over here and there, okay. So you say, okay, okay, that's green, okay, I'm good, you know, if you, if you feel like that, that is necessary, okay. You can, you can make that kind of decision or you can just follow me if you're an absolute beginner, okay? So either way, it's going to be fun for you, okay? So while we're doing the snow, we're also doing the 
atmosphere, okay? Now, so I need to come over here and I'm going to use paint spray, okay? Now, because I want, uh, um, you know, I'll draw it for you, okay? I want uh, snow on top like that, okay? So all this, all this will be in the drawing on my blog post, okay? So don't, don't worry about it. If you are not comfortable, I'm going to, this atmosphere is meeting that atmosphere, okay? So, okay, but you know, when you do snow, they are kind of round, so you need to kind of give them a little bit of a round, um, you know, a round edge over there, so it looks like snow, okay? Okay, just a little bit of pulling it out here, okay? And then I'm going to drop that beautiful purple color over here, and I say, ooh, that might be too much, if that's how you feel, okay? It's all up to you, and then you can put some more gray and dilute the purple. But I actually, I, I've been an artist for so long. I'm so used to, I'm so used to, uh, you know, very vibrant color. It actually doesn't bother me. Okay, so do you see a pine tree showing? Even though it's very, very abstract, right? But you know that you can see that it's there. Okay, and then I'm going to go quickly do this bottom part. Okay, of the pine tree. Do this bottom part. And then uh, we will go to the more of the background, okay, to finish this painting up. Isn't that fun? Are you having fun with me? I hope you are. And uh, just take your time, okay? Just, uh, you know, stop and go back if you need to and if you are unsure, okay? And don't worry about, you know, you know, at time, when the time comes and you have enough practice, you will uh, be able to just... Oh, don't have to really think about it. Actually, yesterday when I was practicing, I was actually on the phone with my daughter. Uh, we were Skyping, I guess, you know, um, because, uh, you know, as you're more, um, you know, used to your watercolor. Okay, I'm going to leave this as snow, and then this is the, you know, the part of the, uh, part of the, um, the pine tree that is dripping on the floor. And we know that, right? Because if, if there's a lot of heavy laden snow, then it will do that, right? And isn't that fun? Okay, so that's about it. And then I'm going to pull some of this color out. Okay, pull some of this color out. You know, for the ground, okay? Now, uh, the ground, sometimes I would like to put uh, a little bit of dark brown on the ground. So dark brown is mixed burn umber with black, right? You know, because it's night nighttime. Okay, I, I'm so glad that I'm still, you know, so you can just do that, okay? And then you come over to Sanders leg and it's the same thing, okay? Sanders uh, shoes, uh, not Sanders, oh wow, I, I I actually slipped, Mr. Gnome, Mr. Gnome. I, I keep telling myself, no, he's not Santa. <laughs> and so, uh, more of that uh, pink gray or indigo, let's do some pink gray color here, okay? Now, that's just because that's his part of his shadowy part, okay? So you don't want too much shadow because we're going to also let you or the viewer know that it's not just shadow. There is actually, um, there's actually snow there. And so in order to give a suggestion of the snow, we're going to use a, a paint gray mixed with a royal blue, okay, over here. Okay, so you can see, you know, because when people see that color, they kind of relate that to the snow. And then you leave some white color, okay? Okay, I'm going to, now what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to leave this part kind of alone, okay? Now, uh, I might use some paint spray to do another snow bank on the, on the tree over here, okay? Okay, so that's how you do that. You leave this part white and then you just uh, do the atmosphere over here, okay? And then people can see that, oh, okay, there's a snow, like this this bank right here, right? I'm just doing the same thing. And if you want it more defined, then you can just drop a little bit more of a line. But make sure the line is kind of soft, it's a loss and fine line, okay? Not very, okay, not very uh, strong, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is, you, I'm going to, because it's an illustration, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with the cadmium uh, yellow medium as a happy color, okay? As a happy color, it's almost Mr. Gnome is carrying a lantern behind him, okay? Or it's just, you can say that it's just the light of the forest is coming from behind, okay? So it brightens up. I saw that in one of the pictures. can't show you the picture because, you know, it's somebody's picture with a little boy, 
Okay, and it looks like that there is some color of yellow. Can you see that? Isn't that kind of happy? Because it's an illustration, right? We accentuate what is actually happened. Actually, with that picture that I saw, it was real. There was really a light coming from behind. So maybe the photographer had uh, put, and then we dilute it. Okay, as we come out, we dilute it. Okay, now the red wanted to come out, which is fine. You know, I know that red is going to do that, so I use a napkin and dab that area a little bit dry, okay? Kind of stop it from keep bleeding. But if it bleeds a little bit, it really doesn't bother me. And it uh, shouldn't bother anyone because this is watercolor, right? And it's just, it's uh, keep, you know, when water go next to it, it just keep wanting to keep bleeding. And I don't like that. So I just uh, kind of clean it up a little bit, okay? Just clean up the area a little bit. Okay, now so you can see that there's some light coming from behind, right? Not a lot, but uh, enough to kind of brighten Mr. Nong up, okay? And so uh, from here, because the light come from behind, so in between his leg, there is actually some light, okay? And I'm going to let that happen. The same cadmium yellow medium, okay? So I was just uh, telling you, and uh, now I'm cleaning up edges uh, down here, okay? I was telling you when I was young, I just like really like to use my imagination, right? And when I first see snow, um, you know, in Salem, there's not a lot of snow. But then one time I went to, I drive from Salem, Oregon to Provo, Utah, and we went by this place called Bend, Oregon. Everybody, you, you guys know where Bend, Oregon is, right? And uh, oh, wow. It was a very snowy um, winter night, and that's the first time. Now, I'm putting some gray down here because I still want some shadow, okay? But over here, it's bright and yellow, okay? And I'm going to put some over here. Isn't that fun? And then I'll tell you more. And so that was the first time a Chinese person, me, okay? You can actually get some of the yellow go into the belly, okay? You know that. I always do that. Because that, you know, make the painting a little bit consistent with each other. And so I uh, I was like um, kind of in awe, right? And the tree was so heavy laden with snow. And I have never seen anything like that. And so the whole night while we were driving, um, you know, uh, I think it was fr either from Oregon to uh, Provo or from Provo to Oregon. I think it was from Provo to Oregon because we were going home for Christmas and there was a bunch of students. Okay, now, this yellow light that's coming should go onto the snow, okay? A little bit. Just a little. You can hardly see it, okay? So, because it's reflection, right? Snow always have reflection. So, we wanted to put a little bit to brighten up the snow just a tag, okay? Okay, so we just let it be there, okay? And I'm going to keep working on this area, okay? Of the, you know, the light that is coming from behind okay so that will just be a little bit of like brighten up right brighten up mr nom and i and and we'll go all the way over here too okay so see this time is a is a good um a, a good value for your time because i'm actually doing most of the background with you guys okay isn't that nice okay so it's coming to meeting the the shadow over here so in this area it's kind of vague okay it's kind of vague, but it's good. <laughs> Thank you for putting up with my... Uh... <laughs> and so, I want uh, the top part over here also be uh, yellow-ish. Okay, more light coming from over here, okay? Because this is, you know, the part where it's the main part of our painting, okay? And it's good, you know, to be happy, happy yellow. And then I put some of that, if you can see, I put some of the yellow actually all the way to his head. Okay, and then it can come all the way over here. Okay, now with Mr. Bird, uh, Miss Miss Bird, and uh, Miss Bird. Okay, so I'm going to have some yellow over here because I don't want her to be left left out from the luminosity, luminosity of this um, of the painting. Okay, so and that's that's the edge of the snow bank. Okay. Isn't that fun? Okay, so with him, there's more light. With her, it's a little less, okay? So that's what we're doing, okay? I need to put a little bit more over here. Because, uh, 
you know, it should go a little bit, you know, so it radiant from him, right? Isn't that fun? Are you guys having fun? When you when you ping along with me, you will really have fun. Okay, now, because uh, this area is snow, snow doesn't mean it's totally white, okay? So we have some, you know, I'm just pulling color out from the branches onto the snow, okay? Okay, over here is the same thing, okay? Pulling some of the, you know, so we don't need to just go dip because, uh, you know, we don't want snow to be all white, you know, because white, something as white as snow, it just really reflect off the whatever is in this environment, okay? You can even drop some green there. Like if you say, okay, we want some green reflection, that's fine too, okay? Okay, I need to put some black, uh, uh, my Chinese black, my Chinese ink, okay, so I'm pulling this thing out, dipping the tip of the brush onto the little ink, and then intensify this area. I should have done that when it was still wet, but then I have forgotten, or thinking about something else, so now I put it back in, okay, so it'll be more dark, more dark, and then I'm putting a little water to dilute it a little bit, okay so that it will come down and see down here is so close to the ground that we really should put more dark color down here okay now if you don't have chinese inks which um you know maybe for christmas hey today is the day before thanksgiving after i make this video i need to go make pie make pie and jello you know that's what i like to do and so um for Christmas, you guys can get some Chinese ink if you like, or just get it now. Who cares, right? <laughs> okay, that, that part is kind of dark, okay? Now, so we're almost done. We read our, okay, so what I'm going to do is just do the background. And the background is mainly pink gray. Maybe I'll add some Chinese ink on it, and then I will do a suggestion of pine coming from here, okay? So that was what I wanted to tell you. I, I like to daydream, and my imagination is very, very... Um, active okay it has been since i was young because um you know probably because uh no i'm going up here because i'm suggesting there's more snow more snow over there okay rounding the snow okay and then uh you know because i uh, when i was young i really don't have a lot of toys and uh, so i'm always like by myself you know i have a little doll but then i usually use my imagination i really like to use my imagination to now when we're going like see the snow bank over here okay so this is the background okay and when we get closer to the bird let's not uh, make the line so harsh okay we will, i hope i'm yeah i'm still in okay and then come over here because do you remember i just put a glow over there right and so where the pink gray meet the glow it should be very very dilute okay and I want to soften the edge to the back, you know, that part doesn't really matter. And then soften over here. The suggestion of snow still come all the way over here, okay? And uh, so this will be the second time we do a snow scene. So I hope you guys are really, really, now uh, really, really uh, try and do that, okay? If you can do the two painting, you will be pretty much, um, you know, quite comfortable, you know, with doing snow background, right? And so... You know, then you can come with me with my imagination and we can uh, just explore what we can create. Uh, part of being an artist is you need to be able to create, right? Like um, something from your mind go into paper. And so it is uh, a very good thing to uh, for winter time to um, have uh, some of the snow uh, have the skill to do the snow okay and so the next painting we're gonna film um, painting uh, just two cute little um, uh, cute little uh, penguin right and we need snow at the back but it will not be dark snow it be, so this is kind of like a nighttime snow okay but the next one we're gonna do more of um, glacier you know, um, like, so I'm dropping the purple, you know, while I'm doing the, while I'm doing the paint spray, okay? And so this will, um, this purple background, I mean, this paint spray background will actually make the yellow more, more, uh, look more lively, okay? Now, so as you do this with me, then we will, you know, be like artists, right? We create our own thing. We need to be able to do that, right? And to be able to put our, what is in our mind, our imagination onto paper, we need the skill to do that. And so 
I'm learning, I'm improving, I can tell. And so I invite you to, you know, just uh, ping along with me so that you can, you know, keep that skill and then you can express yourself better. Okay, you can just kind of drop it because it's just the atmosphere, right? And then we're going to come back and uh, I will put some snow on there. But sometimes you can just leave the white spot, right? You see, I leave some white spot and I'll tell you in a minute how I'm going to, you know, do snow, okay? And so I'm very happy that you are in this journey with me, though. You know, that we're, we're doing this together. You know, we're practicing as I'm learning, I'm showing you and uh, you're practicing as you are painting along with me, okay? And so, you know... We will do this like uh, now back to the indigo because I'm going to like put the, some suggestion of uh, of a tree over here. Okay, you see that? You see a tree coming along, kinda right. And because this is the main tree, so I'm not going to be too uptight about over here. Okay, I'm just going to just drop in some of that indigo color. And so you're kind of seeing that tree is kind of behind our main character over here, okay? And so the more the more skill you can acquire, the better then you can express yourself, right? And then uh, that that is really a big part of my my uh, wanting to because I just want. You know, sometimes the world doesn't have what we want, right? Some a lot of the things are in our imagination, and that's great because. We imagine a peaceful Christmas scene. A peaceful, happy Christmas scene. And uh, we can also imagine, you know, I don't like to imagine uh, sad things, you know. But, you know, I don't see why we need to do that. But, you know, as of right now, we are bringing this to life for us, for yourself. And when your skill is uh, where you think that you can start doing that, then you should, you know, you should go try and it will be yours, you know, you then you will suddenly say, hey, you know, I've learned something and I and now I can actually put it into, you know, you know, having fun. You know, and uh, it makes everything more magical. It makes things more magical for me. And when I give this away um, or sell it, then it becomes magical for people. And if they, uh, what is the word for it? If they uh, really felt the same way, okay? There's a, a beautiful, a more beautiful uh, word for it. I, I can I can think of it in Chinese, but I can't think of it in English. You know, edified, you know, we're both edified, you know, the same way, okay? So there it is, okay? And so we are going to, uh, we are going to, um, you know, I'm just going to leave you uh, at this point and then but what I'm going to tell you is there's a little bit more I will do and I just want a little bit more purple now and also just to be consistent be sure you brush a little bit of purple on him okay on the right reflection area okay so we're consistent with the background I'm so glad that I said that before I say goodbye okay so um, and maybe I just a drop of purple on little little Miss Robin okay Miss Robin, Little Robin, okay, whoever we want to call him. And that is good, okay, I put too much water in that bit up, okay? All right, and so he is looking at his friend. He just saw a little robin. Now, the robin probably is a little bigger because it's an illustration, so I kind of want him to be a little bigger over there, okay? And so this is, and uh, you know, you guys have a very happy Thanksgiving, okay? I'm going to maybe just darken this area a little bit, and then uh, I am going to drop some... Uh, okay, I'll just show you what I do, okay? I use some acrylic ink, the uh, more liquid kind, and then uh, um, and I'm going to uh, use the paintbrush and dip it in acrylic and just drop a little bit of white over there. Now, what that does is I'm just suggesting suggesting snow, okay? And you can do that or you don't have to do that. It's all up to you. If you like to do it with me or you can just stop at this area because, you know, in no uncertain term, right, that you can know that it's a snow scene. Now, just uh, just so that you know, I'm going to put a little bit of darker area from here to here so it will be a little more consistent, okay? And he is walking in the winter wonderland. And uh, I hope that you guys will ping along with me and uh, have as much fun as I do today and thank you please subscribe to me okay and uh, leave me encouraging words if you guys are uh, really um, 
like the way I do things, you know, and uh, and then uh, we can be friends. And but I know that if you're shy, you don't have to do that. And uh, but um, just uh, have fun and uh, use your creativity. Unlock that part that is inside of you. Okay, that you that you have that all of us have. And uh, and then uh, we can have fun together. Okay, and uh, anyway, okay, I'm gonna say goodbye. Bye bye.